Okay, so um, that rather piece of chaos in terms of using these gloves. Uh, this is the first time I've kind of done this, so um, it's going to be um, probably a bit hit and miss. I've also got a camera that keeps kind of um, timing out for some reason, and that's kind of a as you can see from the way the camera is at the moment, uh, which is a shame because I was going to be doing uh, these kinds of shapes. So I'll probably end up having to do it with this camera because the other one, uh, but of course then it puts me further away from the mic, so I'm really sorry. Um, I'll try and do my best. Um, and basically th this this is a, a Mimu glove and, um, and basically it, it, it sort of has sensors inside the glove itself. And these are then, um, you can assign sort of different sort of actions to them, whether that's OSC or MIDI or so on. Um, you can see from the software, which is here. So um, you can have two pairs of gloves, but you can actually have a few more um, sorts of devices. You can use like phones and there are other sorts of things as well. And for me, I've basically just got the, um, uh, the one glove at the moment that's being used what it looks like it's got a little button here where am i there i am <laughs> sorry i'll set up for the other camera it's just not really working um and you've got sort of it gives you haptic feedback and various other things but the the the, the core principle you've got sort of uh, um sort of motion and orientation you can see from the middle window here that's got your forwards backwards down oh, where's my backwards there we go a little bit too far out for me um, and you've got the roll on the uh, on the wrist, let's see, so you can do that as well. Pitch your, so you can use that for different things. And then you've also got, if you see the middle one where it says drum hits, um, you've got a variety of things with uh, sort of that simulate kind of hitting a drum, membranes and so on, and rotations. Um, and then further to the right, you have then the postures. So the main postures, I mean, something like a fist is a, is an easy one to kind of do, sorry. Kind of work I'm looking at the screen over there and we've got this here. Um, you've got things like the uh, fist, um, open hand, open hand. So it, you, you need to kind of really, you can see the way that it, it sort of, there's sometimes jitter between the two. So you can get a crossover point. So a puppet hand is kind of like a puppet. Right. But at some point when you're opening and closing, the sensors start to um, pick up where you're changing. So sometimes where you get the, um, where possibly a gesture doesn't quite work as well as it, as, as it isn't responsive as much, you can just click on it here, the icon turns orange and then you save. You only need to do a couple. So there's the open one. So you could theoretically find an open hand which is more semi-opened rather than fully open before it switches over. But if you don't want that, then you might, you know, you retrain it. So let's get the, there's the change to puppet is about there. And the change to open is about there. So we'll just do a couple more clicks on there. Puppet, open, bit more responsive. Fist, there's a one finger point, which is this one. Um, I'm also using two. Two seems to be really quite um, difficult. Seems to uh, depend quite a lot on the, or at least for me, on the, the angle of the wrist. So if the wrist changes, that's not too bad now. So one of the things that I uh, found out the other day is it, it's probably, if you're going to do lots of moving, um, Kind of good to train the posture by moving it around. So I'm kind. Of, oh, sorry. I'm <laughs> moving it around quite a lot, so that you know, if I did a two whilst it was down, you can see from the orientation where it says down, um, you can see that it's down, so that it still registers two. So when it's down, you can still see I'm doing a fist. So my arm is is pointing towards the floor now. Open hand, puppet hand, one finger point, two. So therefore. If, if if you're not using something that requires um, motion um, to be in a specific place, like here, right, or with your arm extended out, then you know, 
shifting it around is kind of good. Now, what I've done here is is that you you have the um, the MIDI port here, and you can see the 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 notes or the events, the MIDI notes that I've been focusing on. So, kind of generated five of these here. So um, each one, so you can see C is basically a fist. Um, G is two. Uh, G sharp is the one finger point. F is the puppet. And A sharp, or B flat, as I like to call it, especially when in C minor, um, is an open hand. Um, and that's kind of what we have here. So you can see on the keyboard for each one, you sort of have, you can have more than one note if that's what you want to do. But I'll show you the project that this is kind of linked with now. Um, and why only one note is kind of all I really need. Um, so you can define things like velocity and stuff, but, but what I'm doing is something that doesn't really, it, it's not that sophisticated, right? I can play it on the piano or the QWERTY keyboard as much as I could play it using this. It's just that this will give, you know, just, just a more interesting kind of uh, way of dealing with it. Okay, so that's kind of the interface um, as far as the gloves are concerned. And then over here with Ableton. So I've, I've done a, a video on this project before. Um, it's the idea of kind of creating a, a one finger kind of uh, performance tool. So, I've, so instead of using uh, keyboard commands, uh, like on the QWERTY keyboard, um, I'm basically just um, hitting it with, uh, with, I've transferred them over to the Mimu, right? At the moment you don't hear anything because if you look at the, um, software Glover you can see here where it's red so that it's not outputting any commands at the moment it's reading them but it's not set, it's not passing the MIDI messages on I've kind of got it um, silent otherwise every time I move my hands and I'm someone who does move their hands a lot um, you'll keep hearing MIDI notes and those sorts of things so I've tried to um, to keep it sort of quite uh, quiet unlike my children who tend not to be very quiet at all um, so I'm going to turn it on now. So here's the fist. Right. So that's the note C. I'm going to turn the volume down of the music. A bit more. So that's the note C, right? So whenever it's C comes up, and you can see that on the keyboard, um, on the lover. So whenever that C comes up, this goes through... I'm going to turn it off again. <laughs> Uh, quite difficult, right? Um, so the note comes through here as the, as the main sort of uh, channel for MIDI messages. And then each of the instrument channels is set to receive MIDI from this one finger. So one message passed out to lots of different destinations. And each destination features a different sort of collection, either instrument and also the use of the arpeggiator and also the pitch. So here's the first one, which is this um, crep slide. So this is C, right? Fist C. So what we hear here is essentially a bass part. It's in eighth notes. The scale tool is conforming it to um, the natural minor scale, Aeolian mode, and then there are a variety of um, timbral shaping sort of uh, um, sort of things that we expect to see in an instrument rack, right? Um, so the next one is kind of brushed bell. As you can see, this one outputs a chord, but you don't hear a chord. It's an arpeggiated chord because we have um, a, a chain selector here where you get a slightly different uh, one, two, five. Slightly different sorts of values. Okay. So if I take the chord off, you can hear it's just one note, right? So you see, every every hand gesture will result in a in a different um, note, and then those notes go through the one finger and sent out. And each, you can hear that's just going from C to B flat. You do it as a chord. Sorry, can't see it. C, B flat, 
open hand. A bit Bruce Lee. <laughs> there we go. There's a pad. I'm not convinced about the pad, to tell you the truth. So I've got it quite quiet. Um, I'm not sure whether I prefer it with just the um, with the other instruments playing. But anyway, it's there. An arpeggiated chord set to random once on the arpeggiator. And again, sort of very simple operator uh, patch. And then we have here. And then what we see a bit higher, a bit more motion. See, there are other things we could do, like mapping things like gates and so on, but to be perfectly honest, it feels like it just gets a little bit too um, complex. What I'm planning on doing is using my other arm. I mean, I know I've got a second glove and I can use a second glove and that's fine. But added to the second glove, I'll probably end up with, uh, with a touch interface that you can put on your, like from the phone, right? You get one of those jogging armbands. <laughs> And then you just sort of put it on your arm and then it, it all looks a bit sort of minority report. But it's that sort of thing, right? So there we go. So, and then finally, I have a kick drum. Which I've also got controlled under this. Um, there's a, sorry, you can't see. There's a button in here, which you can press. And that will turn the drums on and off in terms of its channel. I'll, I'll make sure I do that. So take the solo off. So because it's open hand, that's B flat, C. And I'm going to turn the drums off now. Right, so that just turns the channel off. It doesn't stop the drums because the drums are also, um, I didn't show you, the drums are also under a, um, they have an arpeggiator that's in quarter notes. And then I have another hi-hat, which you might just be able to hear that's sort of playing the, um, the off beats. Right, so that's got its own arpeggiator that's set here to eighth notes. Kind of an interesting use of um, arpeggiators in general. Let me just turn that off. It's an interesting use because um, the playhead doesn't run, right? I mean, as soon as you hold the posture, it sort of kicks in. Um, but that's that, right? To stop it, <laughs> I have to put it into solo <laughs> or turn it off using the um, software on Remo. Um, so I'm going to run through the... So what you should try and do is keep an eye on the chord sections over here. Um, I'll show these now so that you can see... So that one's fist, one finger point. So if, if you're inconsistent in, in the muscle tension in your um, postures, then the software misreads or has great, greater difficulty, the um, sensors. One finger point. G. That one's a really difficult one. I have to, uh, it's like it feels like it needs to be in front of me, which makes it really difficult when I do, because this computer with the camera is just to the uh, left of me, or the front of me, right? And the thing about the um, postures and so on also is that as, as you get sweatier, the sensors read you differently and da 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 and things get hot and whatever else. But um, okay, so I'm gonna turn this microphone off and, um, and just play the chords and stuff that's there.
too many buttons, right? <laughs> it's like so much stuff to kind of do. But the thing is, is you can see there that the, the where there are, sorry, I'm not, I, I see I'm doing it like this so that I'm not particularly rude. Uh, I picked two because they works really together going from one to puppet, right? Or the other way around, puppet to one. So that there's a, there's a kind of a sequence that goes from F, G, and then G sharp or A flat, right? So I try to kind of map the, um, the postures to be, to sort of make some sort of sense in terms of where you go from one thing to the next. So from puppet to two, it doesn't feel like you travel through too many postures to actually get to where you want to be. Puppet, two, problem is, is that it reads two very much like uh, an open hand. I think it's because of these two fingers here. So if they're too relaxed, as you can see, it switches over. So again, um, we might go back into the posture training. So the question is, is how much, I, I, what I've found is how much muscle tension should be in there. At the moment, you know, you need some tension, obviously, but the thing is you don't want to over tense, um, you know, place too much sort of strain on the body parts. So, so the question is, is where does it tip over? And then you remap the posture, open, two, one, up it, right? And you kind of want to try and um, get that. One of the things I've noticed is that it, you just need to kind of go ahead of where you think the changes are. Swap over, four, two, three, one, two, two, three, four. It's almost like you're sort of slightly changing ahead sort of on the, on the eighth note before. Two, three, four. And plus, because I'm using um, an arpeggiator, um, it expects to kind of see the note in, on, a, on a particular kind of um, division, right? So there's puppet to open hand, one finger point, two. You can see there. So th th the problem there was just like the two was was more was held more tensely, more tense. <laughs> there was there was more tension uh, than the one finger point. You can see there, right? So th th that's kind of the one finger point, two. So you can see there, let's call this one the rabbit, shall we? That one looks like the rabbit. I quite like that one. So we could make a posture called the rabbit and then, and then attach it to something. Um, well, I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, I haven't had these for very long and, I'm, and I've, um, I'm quite happy that I finally managed to get them to kind of work in a way that kind of works. Um, One of the things I'm really sort of interested in is that, that, that once you've kind of designed the, the ensemble settings, so I've kind of got these ensemble kind of melodic chordal parts, and then you attach gestures to them, whether, whether, there's, a, whether there's a song there or not is another. C minor. That's F, G. You can see what happens. A flat, B flat. F, G. See there, it's just the tension here. So again, if you don't want to have too much tension, then try and get the posture right, right? Not like me. So F, A flat, B flat, F, G, one, open. 
two. So what you kind of, what I kind of want to do is 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 work out what the movement is from this to this without going through too many postures because that's really the problem because when you get those kind of false that what you you call kind of jitter right so you get this jitter between um, these in between kind of movements so what happens you get a space when you don't change in time with the arpeggiator Going to try that for a little bit more. As you can see there, there are still uh, some things got to get used to. Um, when I first started uh, working with the gloves, um, and this is not, not a lot of time that I spent with them, I'm afraid. Um, the, um, the the main kind of issue, with, I suppose, was expecting to do too much stuff with them initially. And uh, in many ways, what, what kind of needs to happen I suppose is that you you kind of train your your postures, right? You train the postures to kind of the hands to kind of do or the shapes to kind of be consistent. Um, and you can tell, like here, two is really kind of difficult, and two is difficult because of the tension here. So the question would be, you can see that here. see where it crosses over and it becomes the open hand and you kind of want to go when is it to kind of work out where does it 
where does it swap from this to two and how much tension is needed and what's it like going from one to two sorry <laughs> I can't mix that right <laughs> open so sometimes there are these gaps now I've sometimes experienced the gaps when playing this um, project but on the keys um, and I think that's it's really where the event coincides with the arpeggiator and I think that kind of um, results in a gap because arpeggiators don't really do rest right you can see there requiring too much tension on the remap posture save it So you can see that there's a, you know, it's like playing any instrument really. It requires some kind of coordination, some kind of accuracy um, that you'll need to kind of bring into there. Um, and then of course, there's also the stuff to do with whether you assign the obvious things in terms of the uh, pitch and your, whether that, you know, pitch controls volume or dynamics of something, whether it brings something in. I mean. My tendency would be to probably not do that because then it would kind of require your, if you want something at full volume, it would require your arm to be in a, in a difficult position for quite a while in a gig. That would be a bit too much. Um, or a streamed performance or anything else like that, right? I think as, a, as an Ableton project, irrespective of whether you have the gloves or not, um, this is um, this is an interesting approach to songwriting that's kind of like you know a few chords on the guitar and you sort of play them. And this is kind of like that, only um, set up using arpeggiators. Single notes come in and a multiple of rhythmic and uh, sort of melodic parts kind of come out. Right. see quite a tough one I find it quite difficult because I'm sitting down as well. <laughs> so, so I trained the posture kind of standing up and it, yeah and trying to angle it into the cat into the uh, webcam thing here mm. it was easier with the other camera because then the fist would have just been it would have just been there so um, I'll need to investigate that why it seems to um, why the camera keeps shutting down so I'll work out what that means so there you go. Um, thank you very much for um, listening to this, going through this project. Um, I'm going to play out, do a little bit more, and then um, I'll uh, I'll show you any developments as and when they uh, come up.